Did you know that you can learn a lot more from your urine than just do you have good aim? You can learn some legitimate health insights about your health and about how your body is operating. You're not going to want to miss this. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now keep in mind that I'm not a doctor and nothing that I explain here is diagnostic. I don't want anything that you learn here to restrict your ability to seek medical help when you need it. But with this information that I explain to you, sometimes it can help you ask better questions. So let's look at some factors here. Let's start right off with pain or odor. We really don't want to have pain when we're urinating. That's usually indicating some kind of problem that you're going to want to see your doctor about. But if you have like burning when you're urinating and it's not like, you know, some type of sexually transmitted disease type of burning when you're urinating, you can check your urine pH and see if it's really low. Sometimes a low urine pH can create an irritation when you're peeing. Now, if there's an odor and it's not because you ate asparagus, if it's another situation going on, that can be problems like liver or kidney issues or maybe an infection or even diabetes. And I'm not telling you that you're a diabetic, but sometimes when there's a lot of sugar in the urine, it can have a certain odor to it. So for the most part, if it's not something that we ate, we don't want to see, hey, what's that smell? I haven't had that before. We really don't want that going on and you want to kind of get checked out if that's going on. Uh, foamy urine. This is usually the case of maybe some excess protein or amino acids being spilled out through the kidneys. And you know, some foam or a little bit of bubbles is okay. That's going to happen depending on the volume of how aggressively you're peeing out right at that moment. But we really don't want to see a lot of foam because that can indicate that those proteins are peeing out in the urine and, and that's really not where we want them to be. Uh, another big factor we can look at is the clarity of the urine. So if we put the urine in a cup like this and hold it up to the light, we can often see is there a lot of debris floating around in there. And that's a sign of, of cellular debris really. And we also want to look at the color. Is it, is it dark or is it light or is it, wow, I just drank that water and my pee pretty much just looks like water. That can give a lot of indication of whether, you know, there's hydration factors going on. Do you need to drink more water? Um, if it's really clear, you may be drinking too much water. But when we're looking at this like dark urine saying, oh man, this guy probably really needs to drink a little bit more water. We also need to think about the circadian rhythm and where the body is sending water. So it was Dr. Emmanuel Rivisi who helped us understand that the body has this natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level. So during the day we should be in this catabolic state where the body is very good at creating energy and keeping us going all day, but it's also very good at breaking down tissues so that we can get rid of that metabolic waste. And then at night we move into a more anabolic state where the body's good at sleeping and resting and also rebuilding and repairing. So both of these states are important so that we can continue to live. And the problem is some people will really get stuck in one of these states. And if the person is really stuck in this catabolic state most of the time, it tends to make the body send more of its water to the bowels and less to the kidneys. So if that's the case, a person might not pee out that much and their urine could look really dark and look like, oh man, you're not drinking enough. But the fact is they may be drinking enough, but the body's just sending too much of the water to the wrong place. So if a person's dealing with a catabolic imbalance, they could take steps to improve that issue and then help the body send more water where it's supposed to go. If a person is peeing a lot and with a lot of volume and when you look at the color and it's almost clear, Sometimes that's going on when someone's way too far in this anabolic state and the body's sending all the water through the kidney. So they might get up four or five, maybe 12 times in the middle of the night to pee just because the body's sending all of the water to the kidneys. So when we're looking at this, you know, color of the urine and the clarity and what we're seeing in there, if we're seeing a lot of like stuff floating around in there, there's this cellular debris. If a person is really stuck in that catabolic state, they're kind of breaking down all the time and they're not moving into that anabolic rebuild state. So that can be a really strong sign of, ah, oh, there's some problems going on that you want to correct. And if you think that might be an issue for you, we'll put a link in the description below so you can check out our video on how to know if your circadian rhythm is off. Because we really want to be able to move from that catabolic state during the day 
and the anabolic state at night. The circadian rhythm is not just about, can I sleep? There's functions that need to happen in each state and you really want the body to move back and forth like it should. So there's some things that we can really learn about whether we're looking at this cellular debris and we're seeing it in there and how often are we urinating. You know, it can depend on the level of water that you're drinking, but a lot of times we need to look at these other things to figure out where's the water traffic really going. Another thing we can look at is we can get these 10 parameter dipsticks. You can usually find them on Amazon or something like that. They kind of look like this where you kind of pee in a cup and then you just dip the stick in there and then put the stick on a paper towel and you can kind of match up the colors to the chart. And it can really give you some great insights that you might not be able to gain at home. So it can be a little bit fun. Again, none of these things are diagnostic, but it can be nice to look at some factors to know the right questions to ask your doctor. So a lot of these strips, uh, they'll have variables, different things that they might show on there. Um, I can put a link in the description below, but the link is gonna change in like a week. Amazon's always changing these things. So you can just go to Amazon and just search for 10 parameter urinalysis dipsticks, and you're gonna find a variety of them. And some of the more important factors that we like to look at, we like to look at glucose. If you're seeing glucose in your urine, that can be a sign that you're really not processing carbohydrates and glucose correctly, and maybe you're leaning on that insulin resistance side, and too much glucose is accumulating in the bloodstream, so the body's like, I gotta get rid of some of this, and it's trying to pee some of that out. So some of that glucose is spilling over into the urine. We really don't wanna see that happen. That's usually a sign of things not going well. So that's nice to be able to look at that from time to time. Uh, we can see ketones on these dipsticks, maybe showing that you're uh, processing a lot of fats. Maybe if you're eating a very low carb diet and you're processing uh, more carbohydrates, that's not always a bad thing, but sometimes it's okay to look at that. This isn't the best way to test your ketones. If you are doing a ketogenic diet, we really like to see people look at blood ketones and not through the urine. There's some problems in that testing when you're doing that. But something we really wanna look at is urobilinogen and bilirubin. And if we're seeing either of these in the urine, that can be a strong sign that bile is not flowing correctly. And bile is this soapy substance that's made by the liver and it's stored in the gallbladder and then it comes down and helps us emulsify our dietary fats and helps us really digest our food and break it down correctly so that we can get all the nutrients out of that food. So it's a really big deal and it's very common for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly and then it'll stay in the gallbladder and it'll continue to concentrate there until it concentrates into stones or sludge and it can create a lot of problems that way. But when we're looking at this issue here, we want to understand that the liver filters toxins out of the body and it puts a lot of those toxins into the bile. So when that bile comes down into the intestinal tract and moves through the intestinal tract, it's carrying those toxins with it so it can go out the back door when we poop like a champion. So those toxins are leaving through that bile flowing correctly. So if someone's bile is not flowing correctly, we'll often see this bilirubin and urobilinogen trying to escape through the urine. So that's not something you wanna see. That's a really strong sign that bile needs a little bit of help to flow better so that your body can detox the way that it really wants to detox. We also need that bile to be able to access fat-soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. Those are kind of a big deal. So if you think that could be a problem for you, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on 10 signs of poor bile flow so you can see if there's other factors showing up. But that's a great thing to be able to look at with your urine and get some great insights into whether your bile appears to be flowing or not. Other things we look at are specific gravity. And this can kind of give some insights and just to the level of stuff that's in that urine. And if specific gravity is low, and we're saying like, uh, we like to see specific gravity usually around 15. And when you look on the dipstick, it'll say like 1,015 or 1,005, and the, the range is like up to 1,030. But all the cool kids just say like 15 or 30. You don't gotta waste your time with all that thousand business. So we like to see it around 15. And if it's below 10, that can be an indication that maybe a person is drinking too much water or they need to lift their mineral levels. And if you see that specific gravity like 30 or up above that range, then that can be an indication that a person may not be drinking enough water or they may have a hard time peeing out those minerals and maybe blood pressure is going high because the system is kind of thickening up with a lot of this gook. So that's a good thing to keep an eye on. 
you can look at these nitrates and leukocytes. If you see both of these on one of these dipsticks, that can be an indication that there could, there could be a UTI or some type of bladder infection that needs some attention. There's also protein that you could see. So if you have foamy urine and you're also seeing protein on this dipstick, that could be a sign of some things going wrong that you'd want to get checked out. And sometimes this protein can be about the inability to actually break down proteins. Someone's digestion is not working correctly, so they can't break down those proteins and turn it into amino acids so that the, the body has these building blocks that it needs. And when that's the case, sometimes the body will break down its own tissues to access those amino acids, and then we'll see some of that protein in the urine. And you can also look at the pH. The pH of your urine can be an important piece of information but I don't want you to listen to the people that say, oh, we all need to alkalize or you're going to be dead by Thursday. We really don't want our urine pH to be overly alkaline. And there really is no correlation between the urine pH and your blood pH. That's fiction when people tell you that that's a matchup, that you can just look at your urine pH and get an idea of what your blood pH is doing. That's not really how it works. If you want to learn more about that, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on uh, the truth about pH balance. But you can see there's a lot of information that you can gain. You were just flushing it down the toilet the whole time. You don't need to look at these things every day, but if you can check in from time to time and just pay attention to what's going on, you can really get some good insights. And one of the biggest insights that you can gain is just from the color. So if you haven't seen it already, jump over and gain some more insights in our video on understanding what the color of your urine can tell you. I can't wait to hear about your results.